Okay, so in this video, I'm going to um, answer one important question that um, many of my clients have been asking. If QuickBooks is only for US-based uh, businesses. So um, I will try as much as possible to respond to that question and share some of the core features of QuickBooks and whether it's actually um, very good for businesses outside the US. Maybe if you have business in other countries outside the US and you're wondering if you can still use QuickBooks to run your uh, business, uh, business accounting uh, system. So that's uh, what I will attempt to answer in this video. So first question is what is QuickBooks software? So QuickBooks software basically is an accounting software that helps to track your income, your expenses, your assets, your liability, and also helps to organize your books of accounts in such a way that you are able to generate timely reports without probably sifting through your uh, physical document. So it's like a software that makes it easy for you to manage your transaction processes. In short, it's been proven that QuickBook has helped a lot of businesses um, uh, know uh, their trends, make decisions faster than uh, what they could do if they were actually using a manual form of accounting uh, uh, system. So let me just show you how QuickBooks are. This is this is QuickBooks software. You have the you have two types of QuickBooks software. We have the online and then we have the desktop version. But for now, the online still has um, the desktop has more features. It's seen as being more robust compared to the online. If you can use the desktop very well then the online wouldn't be a problem because QuickBook is uh, probably uh, trying to extract as many features as possible from the desktop to the online so that both can become a match. But for now, the online is not a match compared to the desktop. So QuickBook is an accounting software, like I said. So again, uh, what are the types of QuickBook software that we have? We have difference in terms of platform and then we have by region. So in terms of platform, we have uh, the QuickBooks Desktop and then we have the QuickBooks Online. So the QuickBooks Desktop and the QuickBooks Online. If you go online and search uh, QuickBooks Online, so here you'll be able to log into the QuickBooks Online platform. So if you go to uh, QuickBooks Online website, where they will take you to uh, their online platform and then you're able to subscribe and make payments. So this is uh, QuickBooks Online, as you may want to um, log into your account, you go to sign in. So here you're able to enter your username and password and then you can sign into the online platform. And then this is um, the desktop version. Now the difference between the online and desktop is that for the desktop, it's offline. You don't need internet to work, but you can only access it on that system where you install. Like now, if this system, if this QuickBooks software is installed, on this computer system you can only use it on this computer system outside this office you won't be able to use it so that is different between online and desktop but for the online you can access from anywhere like here you require to enter your username and password and then you can log into the online platform so you can access the online from anywhere on your device so that's different between online and um, the desktop version however um we are also providing um, an application that makes it easier for you to access the desktop from anywhere, and that's via a cloud server. So if you want to access QuickBooks desktop from anywhere, you can actually use a cloud server to do that for you. So you can deploy a cloud server or you can talk to your uh, consultants. So with the cloud server, you can access your QuickBooks desktop from anywhere via remote desktop uh, connection. So, but for QuickBooks Online, you don't need a cloud server. You can access it online via your browser. But from the desktop version, you can either, either launch it on your system and as in the cloud server, you will be required to log into your cloud server via a remote desktop connection. So that is the difference in terms of platform. Now, knowing which platform to use for your business depends on the type of business you run and then um, the need for you to access report remotely or not. Before now, you can actually... Um, you can only access the QuickBooks desktop on the computer system. But as the need for remote access, remote collaboration, where you have different branches and you want all your staff to work from different locations and then get them updates, a central company file. 
so that's where the cloud server becomes a must so you the desktop is not limited to the uh, system where it's installed you can actually uh, take it to the cloud and access from anywhere now if you run a manufacturing company you run a retail wholesale and distribution company quickbooks desktop still remains the best and then the type of quickbook desktop you can actually go for is uh quickbooks enterprise so we have difference by features too so we have quickbooks enterprise we have quickbooks premier then quickbooks pro before now there was quickbooks simple start but quickbooks had quickbooks wiped out quickbooks, uh, the simple start out of the market so in terms of features we have the enterprise we have the premier and then we have the pro so if you're trying to deploy quickbooks you need to first look at the kind of business you run if it's a retail business manufacturing wholesale if you run an ngo you run a real estate business you run um lending company you run a school you run um a bdc you run a trucking company or transportation company you run an insurance agency you run a food or restaurant company depending on the kind of company you run this is what you need to look at this is what you need to tell your consultant first before you know the best version for you for a manufacturing company that requires um uh, raw materials where they will have to convert raw material into finished products you need an application that allows you to track your raw materials and also are able to um convert them into finished product based on material configuration so if you're going for such kind of um application then you probably be looking at the quickbooks enterprise and quickbooks premier so they are not the same when it comes to differentiation differentiating uh the, them by feature so quickbooks enterprise works for manufacturing company in wholesale and distribution and also the premier now in terms of number of users uh, the QuickBooks Enterprise takes up to 30, and now QuickBooks is expanding to user to 40. Then Premier takes up to 5, and then the Pro, 3. But well, if you run a service-based business, then you can probably go for the QuickBooks, uh, either the Pro or you can go with the online. So the online for now is still designed for service-based business. However, if you run a retail-based business, Online Plus still works for a retail-based business. So we have different types of the online. We have the online essential, we have the online plus so let me take us back to the pricing for the quickbooks so you look at um the different types of quickbooks that we have so we have the essential we have the simple start and then there is the online plus for quickbooks you can see it here so you can see we have the simple start essential and online plus so you can also see the varying features of each of these they are different and they work for different lines of business. Now, if you're a product-based business, you will probably go for the online plus. So you have to go for the online plus. Then, okay, so that's the difference, different, different types of QuickBooks by either the application, which is desktop or online. Mm -hmm. Then we have difference by region. Then we have QuickBooks US, QuickBooks Canada, QuickBooks Australia, QuickBooks UK, and, and all that. Now, why is this uh, very important? It's because Accounting systems varies from region to region. Every region has their own accounting uh, principles. Every region has um, accounting laws that guide how businesses are supposed to capture or recognize their transaction. So QuickBook will not just give you a software that, uh, that is for US and then get it to apply in the UK. So that's why you have different QuickBooks by region. So, but as QuickBooks continue to upgrade its platform to online, they are looking at converging all the region in such a way that whether you are in the US, whether you are in the UK, whatever the kind of country you are, there will always be a feature that lets you run your operation seamlessly. So, but for now, we have people's difference by region. So, and there you will see this more on desktop version. So, if you want to use QuickBooks for your line of business and you see that the desktop version is what fits your operation, you also need to pay attention to the region. But most times, most times, I've always seen the US uh, version of QuickBooks works for almost any kind of business. So whether you use, uh, whether you're in the UK, whether you're in Canada, whatever country that you are, except there is no desktop version for the region, you will most likely customize the US to work for you. But I've also noticed certain things about QuickBooks desktop, which I'm going to share with you. Some of the core features of QuickBooks desktop, which will tell us whether we can actually use it to run our business or not. So that's different types of QuickBooks that we have desktop or online for the desktop we have enterprise premier pro 
for the online we have essential uh, we have the simple stats and then we have the online plus for the region we have quickbooks uk quickbook uk us canada then in terms of features too that's where you then have the um types that are on that desktop so for the features we're looking at quickbooks that works for your line of business so it's important you look at each of these when you're selecting the quickbooks that works for your business now we've also discussed the industries that uses quickbooks if i go to the desktop version I will try to create a new company. So let's assume we're trying to create a new company on QuickBooks. So you will see where QuickBook will ask you to impute your industry. This is very important. So this is also a proof that QuickBooks accommodate almost all the industries, except those industries that are tightly regulated, like the banking sector. So if I come to um, option, I would have created startup, but here i'll come to option so let's see if we can create a company and we'll come back here so advanced i'll actually use advanced start startup so here let's say we have abc enterprise and then you can fill in all the relevant information click next so this is the point select your industry Tell us your industry and we'll customize QuickBooks to work best for you. You'll be able to review our recommendations and change them in this interview. Add and you can also change in each of the settings. So you can see different industries that you can actually use QuickBooks for accounting and bookkeeping, advertising, agriculture, art and writing, auto, church, construction, general contractor, construction trade, design, architecture, engineering, hair saloon, information technology, insurance. Uh, legal, lodging, manufacturing, medical center, um, uh, non-profit, professional consulting, professional man uh, property management, real estate and brokerage, repair and maintenance, restaurant, retail shop, transportation and trucking, wholesale. You can see here, and if the business you run is not um, listed here, they will most likely fall under general product-based or general service-based business. So that's to tell you how QuickBooks has been designed to accommodate different industries. So if you're looking at uh, QuickBooks working for your own industry, I'm sure this will probably give you an idea of the kind of business you run. And then if once it's listed here, and if it's not listed here, you can as well select this. So it means QuickBooks accommodate virtually all the industry, except the ones that are tightly regulated. There are industries that there is the regulator that will recommend the kind of software to use. So like for instance, the banking industry, you can use QuickBooks to run your banking operation. So that's that for me, that's like one of the key um, industries that you can use QuickBooks to run. You can go to your bank today and they'll tell you they're using QuickBooks because it's a bespoke software. So it's not totally customized for banking operation. But to an extent, you can also use it to run a credit um, and lending company. I can, I've already shared that in this channel. I'll drop a link to watch the video on credit lending, meaning that you can actually use QuickBooks to run that kind of business, but not a total banking operation. So let's look at uh, other areas. Now, can QuickBooks work for other region? Yes, QuickBooks can work for other region. So like I said, from all that I've explained so far, you most likely see that QuickBooks accommodate other region. But most importantly, the region that you will be paying attention to or the features you should be paying attention to if QuickBooks is to work for any other region is the currency of that region. So if I'm to use QuickBooks to run um, or manage a business in any country, the number one thing I want to see is the currency of that country. As long as QuickBooks allow me to activate home currency and then select the country's currency, then automatically means that QuickBooks can actually work in other region. It means it's not just in US that you can use QuickBooks. QuickBooks work for businesses in or in short, almost every region, as long as you have all the world currencies stated there. So the next thing we're going to be looking at is to activate multiple currencies. So here we will show you how you can activate multiple currencies and how to select the currency of your region. So that tells you that QuickBook actually works for different um, regions. So it's not only in the US that we can use QuickBook. So whether you're a product-based business, or your service-based business, people work for you. You can see from here we have tax. As long as your uh, your regulatory authority or tax agencies requires you to collect tax on sale, you can actually activate that right here. You may not call it sales tax the way you see right here, but the system allows you to change the name when you are customizing them. 
So here, you create quotation, as long as your business accept quotation, as long as you track customer's order, and then you want to generate customer statement, you do progress invoicing, you invoice your client based on work done, you incur expenses, so you want to manage the bills you owe, you track inventory. So if you're a product-based business, you can activate this. And then if you also charge your client based on time spent, you can as well activate this too. And then if you have employee, but these are some of the limitations of QuickBooks that I'm going to share later on, which is the payroll part of the system. So, but let's uh, quickly, now you can see based on the industry we selected, QuickBooks will uh, give you a collector chart of account that is close to the type of business you selected when you ask for the industry that we can actually categorize your business on that. So here we want to look at uh, multiple currencies as a proof that QuickBooks is not limited to the US, even though most of the features in terms that uh, regulatory are tailored to the US market, but it still doesn't mean that QuickBook is only designed for uh, US based businesses. So let's uh, look at it. This is a sample company file that I've been created called ABC Enterprise. So we've created the company. Now, if we go to edit, preferences, and then multiple currencies, this is the first stage to check whether QuickBooks works for your business. So you first you need to look at the country you're actually going to be using this QuickBooks. Once you click on currency, you select company preference. Now, by default, QuickBooks will have you select, uh, will automatically select one currency when you create your account. But you can expand it and say, yes, I use multiple currencies. Then it will ask you to turn on multiple currency. Note, if you turn on multiple currencies, you need to need these important considerations here. Once you turn on multiple currencies, you can't turn it off again. If you haven't backed up your company file recently, we recommend that you back, you click no and create a backup before turning on the multiple currencies. You won't be able to use insights, income tracker, or none, none of that. Then you won't be able to select multiple currencies. You won't be able to select multiple customers in invoice for time. And then you won't be able to exchange. So this tells you that um, QuickBooks, when you activate multiple currencies, these are limitations that, that comes with multiple currencies in your region. So you won't be able to exchange information with QuickBooks Mac or copy your company file to work with it. Online payment of invoice doesn't work with QuickBooks with multiple currencies. So this is uh, what you need to note. That's the limitation. So, but if you are running your business in such a way that you don't even need multiple currencies, you only want to track your operations in just your home country currencies. Maybe you've not started doing foreign transactions. I'll probably advise you don't activate multiple currencies. Then you can use your system currency to generate your financial report in your home currency. So if you still use one currency and then you don't have need for foreign exchange transactions and all that, you can leave it. Like I said, when you activate, you use one currency. It doesn't mean that QuickBooks would leave your uh, currency in dollars. You can see here, if I go to invoice, there is no currency that will be displayed. So it just assume that you're using one currency and it doesn't mean that it will tell you the currency. There is no currency that will display, but you can use your system currency or you can export your report to Excel and then add your system currency. But if you do foreign exchange transaction, you will have to activate this and set your home currency in the currency that you are actually in or where your business is located. But this will be the limitation of activating multiple currencies right here. You can see here, you won't be able to use insights, you'll be able to create batch invoice or delete batch transaction. So let's click no and cancel this and go back to some of the things the system is saying. You can see right here, we have batch invoicing. Batch invoicing will no longer be available. Income tracker will no longer be available again. So you won't be able to exchange this file with that of Mac if you activate multiple currencies. And you can reverse this process the moment you activate it. So just to let you know that if these are important features and you don't do foreign exchange transactions, you'll probably leave your QuickBooks like this and use it to run. So whatever country that you are, you can use QuickBooks just the way it is like this. And then when you generate your report, you can export to Excel. But if you do foreign exchange transaction, so let's quickly go back to edit, preferences, multiple currencies, company preference. So I can say yes, I use, and then we'll turn it on. When you turn it on, it will suggest US dollar. You click this drop down. Now you might think that this is the only currency that QuickBooks allow Canadian dollar, Euro, Japanese yen, and US dollar. No, you can click view more 
currencies. You can see here, we have all the world currencies listed right here from Afghanistan to Algeria to Argentina to Australia to Bangladesh to, uh, you can see different currencies, Bolivian, Brazilian, Botswana, British pounds, Canadian dollar, Cambodia. You can see these are different currencies, Chinese yuan, you have Costa Rica, you have Czech, you have um, Egypt, El Salvador, Euro, you can see Fiji, Guinea. So you can see these are different currencies, Israel. So you can see, and these are all the world currencies available on the system. So once you do this, you select your home currency, depending on the country that you are. So let's assume that we want to select um, a currency like um, New Zealand USD. So you select New Zealand USD and then you make it active. Once you make it active, you can see you're about to select non-USD home currency. So you can see Intuit Payroll and Bank Fee Services are only available to. So there are features in QuickBooks that are only available to US. So that's why some businesses keep asking whether QuickBooks is only for US-based businesses. But it still doesn't mean that um, QuickBooks is designed for only US-based businesses, except that there are features that are specifically for US. But you, ask, can, you can still explore the normal accounting feature to manage your operation. This only tells you, in short, one of the major limitations of QuickBooks is payroll. You can't use QuickBooks payroll here in Nigeria or any other country, either New Zealand or whatever country you find yourself. Why? Because payroll is tailored to local tax law. So if you're going to process payroll, it has to be according to local tax law. And if the software is not designed to take into account your local tax law, it might be difficult for you to apply that payroll right here. Once you select this, the setting cannot be changed. You click OK, and then you click OK right here. So people will close this window and then reactivate it. So once you reactivate, our currency is now New Zealand USD. So that's one of the key features you need to know about QuickBooks. You can actually use it to run your operation. So when you activate multiple currencies, it automatically uses your country's home currency to start posting transactions. So that means QuickBooks is not totally designed for US-based business. You can use it to run your operation. Now, we also have the tax, the sales tax of VAT. So if you charge VAT for services rendered or product supply, you can also use QuickBooks to manage that. Now, the difference is that the uh, VAT rate in your region might be different from the VAT rate in other countries' region. System allows you to set your VAT rate. Here, yeah, I can go to Sales Tax Preference, and then I will then click on Yes, Add New. So this is where I will enter the percentage that we charge in our region. So whatever we call it, if you call it VAT, and include VAT. If you call it Sales Tax, I call it Sales Tax. Depending on the name. You prefer to call it or what you call it to your region then this is a tax rate so this is where you enter the percentage the system will give you the option of entering the percentage if the percentage is 15.5 so meaning that for every invoice you create for every sale to generate the system is going to charge you 15.5 as the amount payable to the tax authority and then the name you call your tax authority you can also come here so you can call this let's say new, new zealand revenue service so if that's the name you call your own region and then you can come additional information you take this tax agency you click ok and then you click on ok so you click on ok so anytime i create an invoice if i go to invoice and i select my customers enter the amount or the invoice value apply tax system will automatically charge 15 percent you can see here taxable and like i said this is taxable you can see 50 percent of this is giving us this value based on our, our region so that is um to tell you that you can actually customize quickbooks to work for your region if you charge VAT. now other common feature that you also use in quickbooks is invoicing invoices is the same in any region on your invoice you can select you can this is invoice select the customer you want to add you can select the products you're selling or services description the price per each, the amount, the terms of payment, and every other thing, which is a standard format for invoice in any region. Then you have your payments. When you create an invoice, the system also allows you to receive payments and record deposits, which is a normal uh, workflow on any accounting system in any region. When you invoice a customer, you are supposed to 
receive payment and also record deposits. You record deposits. This is where you select the bank where you, you want is paid in. So here you can also create your bank account. So as long as you have a bank account in that region, the moment you activate multiple currencies, you can add your bank account to so Bank of New Zealand, and then you can select the currency. You can view more currency if it's a foreign account. So by activating multiple currency, it doesn't mean that setting your home currency to New Zealand dollar. It doesn't mean you would only be allowed to add New Zealand dollar accounts. No. You can actually select other countries' currency. When I select other countries' currency, automatically it gives rise to exchange rates, meaning that at the point of entering the opening balance, I can select the exchange rate between the country's currency and New Zealand currency. That is the implication of activating multiple currency. System then gives you provision for other currency and ask you to enter the exchange rate between these countries' regions. So meaning that QuickBook also allows you to post foreign currency transaction. Then you can also record your business expenses on the system. So we have the right check for expenses. We have the enter bill for also credit transaction. This is credit transaction. This is cash transaction. Then um, you have, you can track your withholding tax on QuickBooks. When you receive payments from a customer and the amount is less than the invoice value, if the customer withholds that money, you can record that. When you pay a vendor and you pay less than, you can also do that. So there's room for withholding tax. System also creates room for journal entries, which is the standard uh, feature on any accounting software. You can make journal entry on the system, select the account head or account name, and then select the ones to be debited and the ones to be created. You can click on save and close. Now there's also room for banking too. You can go to your banking, you can make deposit transfer from you register. The only thing is that you won't be able to connect your bank account to your um Connect your bank account to your QuickBooks. So this is a feature that is most that has been perfected in the US. But for other regions, um, we are yet to get a confirmation. So for now, some of the limitations again of QuickBooks is the banking feature. If you want to get real-time transaction uh, import into your QuickBooks, it has to be US-based. That means your home currency has to be US, and you have to you need to be in the US to get that done. But if you're not, you will have to post your transaction manually on the system then if you go back to customer you see that we no longer have our batch invoicing posted right here and also the income tracker why because we have activated multiple currency but if that limitations are not caught to your business then you may probably need to uh, ignore that if you run a school i would advise that you don't activate multiple currency because batch transaction is a feature that a school needs Actually, when you have to invoice 300 400 or 500 students why do you have to do that manually when batch transaction could do that for you so there may not be need for you to activate multiple currencies in quickbooks then you have your normal financial reports which you always need your profit and loss is always the same thing everywhere your balance sheet transmit of cash flow they are all there your receivable balances your payable balances your inventories your banking your tax your general ledger you can even do your budget on the system so what does that tell you it means that people has more feature that can actually accommodate your business accommodate businesses outside the us than what it does for us-based business so there are some features that are still designed for us-based business like i told you but majority of the features that you need to run your accounting operation are not limited to us-based businesses you can see the workflow we have inventories you can receive payments you can record deposits you can check your sales order you can invoice you can generate sales receipts you can see these are a lot of features on quickbooks that you can use to manage your operation you have your customer section you can see you have your, vend your customer section you have your vendor then if you come to payroll the li major limitation of quickbooks on payroll like i said is that you can't use quickbooks to manage your payroll processing or your payroll operation so that means you will require a third party application. But if you are in the US, you can activate QuickBooks payroll to do that. But businesses outside the US may not be able to do that. So that's another feature that you may not be able to use in QuickBooks if your home currency is not in US dollar. So I hope I've been able to answer your question on whether QuickBooks is only for whether QuickBooks can only be used for US based business or businesses outside uh, the US. So if you have other core features that you would like to um, discuss or you would like to you want to know whether it can be used in QuickBooks you can actually use the comment section to drop your question I will try as much as possible to respond 
to that question so if this is the first time you're watching this video you can turn on the notification button or and click the subscription because we'll be turning out more videos uh, that will be helpful for you and if you have a business and then you're thinking whether people can actually work for it feel free to drop your industry i'm probably use that industry to produce